Well, this is Ashley Polite. I am the executive director of the Louisiana chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics, and I am so excited to announce the 2020 Bettina Hillman Award for Special Services for services to special needs children to Dr. Stephen Levine. Um, Dr. Levine is retired now, so congratulations on that end as well. Um, but he was a pediatric pulmonology and critical care uh, physician in the New Orleans area. Dr. Bark, Brian Barkmeyer, who is the professor and vice chair of pediatrics at LSU Health Sciences Center, um, entered, uh, nominated Dr. Levine for this award. And so um, I will go through a little bit about what the background of the award is, and then Dr. Barkmeyer will tell you a little bit about Dr. Levine. So um, as you can see from this large list of accomplishments, Dr. Hillman was um, very well known for all of her work, um, especially around pediatric cystic fibrosis children. Um, and so she has been um, serving in pediatric care, medical education, and specifically around women um, for a very long time, um, has been awarded numerous awards over the years, and even has the Hillman House in Shreveport named after her. Um, so a little bit, um, a little bit of history, Dr. Levine, you definitely are in good company with this uh, award. And Dr. Barkmeyer, I will let you talk a little bit about Dr. Levine and um, what prompted you to make this nomination. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, I'm excited to be a part of Dr. Levine's recognition today. Uh, I've known him for uh, most of my career. And uh, like Dr. Hillman, Dr. Levine was an excellent pulmonologist and cared for many kids over the course of his career from all around the state of Louisiana. Um, over the course of the, his career, he cared for kids with cystic fibrosis, bronchopulmonary dysplasia, asthma, and many other non-pulmonary diseases, including some of the sickest kids in the state. Uh, he has been a prime resource for the pediatricians in our state for the kids who really couldn't get care elsewhere because of the complexity of their problems, oftentimes very complex medical problems combined with often complex social issues too that oftentimes go together. Uh, he was a hospitalist at uh, Children's Hospital before they called it a hospitalist. He uh, was in charge of the chronic vent program at Children's Hospital for many years. And he was head of the PICU in his earliest stages at Children's Hospital. So he served many roles for many people uh, over a long period of time. And in his own very direct way, uh, Dr. Levine influenced the, the lives of many children and their families over a long time. Uh, he was always available to serve as a resource for the families, for the patients, for other healthcare providers, for nurses, for respiratory therapists, for medical students, for pediatric residents, and our fellows. Uh, he's left an indelible mark on all these people over the course of his career. And the, the unique things about him, aside from his own unique personality, is that he did it his way along the whole way. Uh, he cared for kids without regard to their background or their family status. He cared for the most vulnerable, the most afflicted, the most disenfranchised, and sometimes just kids who didn't have someone else to care for them. And, and the one example that really comes to my mind in this is one where he actually never provided direct patient care uh, to this patient. The patient was not from Louisiana, was from an adjacent state. And the mom and the grandma were kind of concerned about the direction the child's care was going in and, and they needed some reassurances. And so they sought uh, through the connections from the physician in the other state, they sought our resources to talk to them. And the mom and the grandma came and spoke with us. We never met the patient, we heard their story. And uh, in his own way, Dr. Levine convinced uh, this family that the, the care their child was receiving was appropriate and, and, and sort of the best available in, in this condition. Uh, it really wasn't with regard to compensation or recognition. It was just a private meeting with Dr. Levine and, and two concerned loved ones and myself. And uh, in this heart-to-heart -heart conversation, it kind of convinced this family to be at, at ease with the, the situation that unfortunately they were in with, the, with their, their child and grandchild. And the family, while sort of not happy with the outcome of the conversation, I think they felt reassured with the conversation in that their child was receiving the care appropriate. And it's just a small example of, of Dr. Levine's efforts to sort of help others. Um, with his retirement, our, our state has lost a valuable clinical resource for special needs children, but by the lives he's touched over the course of his career by over 40 years, both the patients and the, the people he's taught, uh, his, his care will go on for many years to come. So congratulations, Steve, and we honor you today. Uh, I am gratified and amazed, and I wanna thank Dr. Barkmeyer and the Academy 
and the Louisiana chapter for bestowing this incredible honor upon me. I actually knew Dr. Hellman and she rotated at Tulane when I was a fellow at the Cystic Fibrosis Clinic. And I actually um, co-wrote a chapter for her textbook on pe pediatric pulmonology on croup and epiglottitis about a hundred years ago. But I do wanna take this opportunity while thanking the Academy and Brian and all those who have supported me and, um, and that I have had any kind of influence on the residents and medical students whom I enjoyed teaching beyond belief, that this is something that people need to understand that we need to continue. This is the beginning and not the end of complexity in childcare. As technology advances and more kids are saved, they're gonna be left with sequelae. The chronic ventilator program is populated by children who would have died years ago. And as their survival comes, they require lots more help, whether it be gastrostomy tubes or seizure medication or special bracing or scoliosis surgery. These things are left when you survive. And there has to be a body of physicians who understand this. I, I have to say that I never thought of them, as I was telling Ashley before, as special needs. They had needs, they were complex. Somebody had to care for them. They came into, and I'll say this with Brian, our sphere of influence, whether it be out of the NICU or PICU. And when everyone was left, it was left to us to care for them. So I don't know how someone can start and put down the task in the middle just because it's complex or they're not easy to deal with or the families can be exceptionally needy. I mean, if these families can't be needy, who can be? Let's be honest, I think that's fair. And so um, I, while I, I am, as I said, gratified and honored, I'm not sure why I got it, because this is what I wanted to do my whole life. I wanted to make a difference. Um, when I went into pediatrics, I decided I wanted to make a difference. And other than surgery, the biggest difference is giving back children to their families who the families had been told might not come back or thought they would never get well or would never survive. And that's what lent me to PICU. And then that's what lent my partners lent me into, kind of indentured me into the chronic home ventilator program. But it was something that I felt was good that we needed to do. Uh, you can't turn your back on your successes just because it's hard to take care of them. And I, I think that that's something that more pediatricians will learn as more <clears throat> of these children survive. Um, I haven't got much more to say. It's been a fabulous trip for me. Never regretted a moment of it. It was a long, long career, I thought for me, and there were tough moments, but I never had regrets. And part of that was working with people like Dr. Barkmeyer and the other physicians at Children's Hospital and my dealings with the Academy of Pediatrics, both on the national and local level, they bolster the ability to get you through the times when you might sit and think, well, what, what, what's going on? What, 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 why, is the, why am I having so much trouble getting stuff for these kids? Why am I sitting here arguing with insurance or, or third party payers or DME companies? Why do I have to explain myself or explain this child's need? Now everybody on this Zoom knows what I'm talking about, but you have to do it because your patients need it. So what's the difference? So I guess I'll just end it there. Once again, thanking the Academy on all levels Dr. Barkmeyer and all of the colleagues that I've had the for been fortunate enough to work with over the years who've taught me, you, you must complete the task. You can't just walk away when it gets difficult. That's, that's cheating almost. And I think at Children's, we always understand this. It's one of the beauties of being at a Children's Hospital. And I, I'll say something now that I'm sure people will think how horrible, but I always used to tell the medical students, you're at the children's hospital, okay? So your mission includes taking care of people that are too complex, too poor, not pretty, 
uh, you know, not, uh, their, their IQ may not be up to what you'd like, but you're here and they're here. So that's all you have to know or, or get out or don't work at a children's hospital because that's the mission of children's hospitals. And so as we can fulfill our mission, all of us, I want to take this time again to say how grateful I am to all of you and that, um, that this mission continues. With, it'll continue without me. There's someone taking care of these kids now from my division. She'll do a fabulous job, call on her. There are great backups and mentors for everyone. And I just want to say thanks again. And um, it's been a great ride and I had a great time doing it and meeting all these people and working with them. So thank you again. Well, Dr. Levine, clearly this was your calling. Um, your heart is so obvious. Um, and, and even in retirement, you are a true advocate for these children. Um, so I also wanted to give you uh, an opportunity. There's a couple of other people um, sitting next to you and um, others that have joined the Zoom. If you, uh, if you wanted to introduce any, uh, any of them or if they had wife. any words they'd like to say. Is my wife and my son Ben and my daughter Jennifer are listening because I guess they're embarrassed. Their dad called them, so they had to do it. I, none of this <laughs> would have been possible without them. Okay, not the ICU years, not the phone calls in the middle of the night from ventilator patients at home. If you don't have family support, if you don't go home and they make it, they create the environment where you can be selfish for the needs of your patients. You can't do it this long. You can't do it this well. You're pulled away. So I have to thank them as well. They were always behind me. They understood what I was doing uh, most of the time. <laughs> and uh, they supported me greatly. And I, it could not have been done without them. If, if they want to say anything, now's your chance, guys. Well, absolutely. I can't how proud I am of Dr. Levine, Steve and always will be and always have and um he's worked so hard all of these years i'm i'm just honored for him to receive this award that he so well deserves and i thank you um he misses he misses being with his patients i'll tell you that probably the only thing i miss <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's one of wonderful experience for him and he has a legacy. What? Absolutely, a legacy. absolutely a legacy. And how wonderful to uh, to be given the award as, as someone that you actually had the opportunity to work hand in hand with. I think that's an absolutely wonderful um, connection there. So if anybody has any um, anything else they'd like to say, feel free to take yourself off of mute. Um, you're not obligated, but just giving you an opportunity. Yeah. I'm Dr. Levine's son, Ben Levine, and I couldn't be more proud of uh, my father. I'm now not a doctor, but I'm continuing the legacy of children's. I'm a legal fellow at LCMC. Uh, and I, he'll tell you that I know firsthand how many nights he's worked when he came in, you know, when I was down uh, near the door where he would leave and get a call every, all the time, nights, weekends. And I know that he couldn't have put more in to his long career and I couldn't be more proud of him and he really deserved this reward and I'm really happy to be here. Thanks, yeah. man. Really sweet. Thank you so much, Ben. Very, I guess I'll, very I'll, I'll, I'll speak as well. Um, I'm Jennifer, I'm mm -hmm. his daughter. I'm not in New Orleans, but, um, and I haven't been there in a while, but I do know that um, I'm happy that my dad has retired. I know he's not as happy because I'm sure he misses it, but he put in so much time and it's really, I'm so happy to see him get an honor like this. Um, not enough, but, but we'll take it. And, and I'm, I, I'm very proud of him and, um, and yeah, and my brother can continue on the legacy. I, I'll stay away from children's, I guess, <laughs> right now. <laughs> but congrats, dad. Thank you. Thank, Thank you both. You, Appreciate it. And ben. Well, again, Dr. Bean, congratulations from the Louisiana chapter. Thank you, Dr. Barkmeyer, for this nomination. It is clearly very well-deserved. Um, and we are so excited to, to name you as the 2020 uh, award recipient. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much.